Hey guys, OJ from Fluid Motor Union. Even though I'm standing outside here with a couple of E60 M5s, I'm actually going to be telling you guys a little story about how an E39 M5 with open headers changed my life. Now at the time, I was working on an E65 7 Series replacing a battery cable. That runs inside of the car, so everything had to come out, and I was in the actual interior of the car when I heard this noise. The hairs on my arm started standing up, and I couldn't quite place what I just heard. I stood up out of the car, I was like, what was that? So while you're doing these comps, it's against the rules to leave your work area, but that didn't stop me. I got up, I walked over, and I asked the teachers, uh, why did it sound like the air was being ripped apart? I, I couldn't grasp what I was hearing still. So when I walked up to the teachers, I wanted to know why they had stopped at 4,000 RPM. Uh, you know, I heard it rev up, but I didn't hear it go any higher. And they told me that the car was in a failsafe because of all the things disconnected. So the only thing I wanted to know at that point is, how do we get it to rev higher? So I had to ask the teachers, what if, uh, what if I grabbed the diagnostic computer and we cleared the faults and cleared adaptations? Would we be able to get this thing to rev up to redline? They replied that uh, they didn't really see why not. So I grabbed the GT1 and I immediately went to work clearing the faults and adaptations. And sure enough, my effort wasn't in vain. For a few brief throttle blips before the computer locked us out again, I got to hear the greatest noise I've ever personally heard in my automotive career. It was an open ITB S62 V8 at redline. I couldn't wrap my head around how all this noise was coming from a car with a stock exhaust. Keep in mind that this is 2004, so when I say it was stock, I mean quiet and not like M cars are today. It was only air entering the motor and it made a loud, unbelievable, life-altering noise. So even after hearing the air being torn apart by eight individual throttle bodies at 7,000 RPM, I still wasn't satisfied. What if this car had an exhaust? Now, there's no exhaust like no exhaust. So I asked the teachers, if I stayed late and it was on my own time, could I pull the exhaust down and we run at open headers? They again said, uh, I don't see why not. <clears throat> so with the exhaust off and out of the way, I cleared the faults and started it and let it idle to warm up. It was loud. I had heard many open header domestic V8s up until this point, but this was different. It didn't sound typically American, but it didn't sound exotic either. It sounded like an indie car at startup. It felt like it was going to be forever. The tech to indicate that the engine was going to be warm enough to rev. But with the lights cleared, I gave the throttle a blip, and then I let it come down. Then I gave it two more before I fully laid into the front line. This was it. This was the noise that sealed my fate with BMW. This was a vehicle that sounded like a legitimate race car, muffled heavily to pass as a passenger vehicle. My mind was blown, but inside of it was planted an idea, an idea that I knew I would build an open header, open ITB V8 project car. And I did. That car was called Gold Wheels, but we'll save that story for a different day.
guys have enjoyed the videos of the various S62s we've had around the shop, either with open headers, a exhaust cutout, or our cat back exhaust system, which bolts right in place. If you guys are interested in getting any of that work done or buying some of our products, go on our website at www.fluidmotorunion.com and get in touch with us. Thanks a lot.